Okay, in this video, we'll take a look at this particular op amp configuration. So in this particular op amp configuration, we have a negative feedback. So that basically means there's a connection from the voltage output in this case right here, that's the out node, to this negative terminal of the op amp or the minus or the inverting terminal of the op amp through a resistor. So there's a feedback path built in. Uh, we also see that there's a voltage source and a resistor in line with that voltage source. In order to analyze this particular circuit, let's assume, uh, let's pick a reference node. So let's pick a common reference node, and this particular line that's common to almost everything, uh, we'll call that a ground node. So we picked a common reference node. That's step one. Second, we're going to look at this particular op amp uh, as an ideal op amp. So if we take a look at an ideal, look at this as an ideal op amp, we see that the ideal op amp has a couple of properties. One property is that because of an infinite input impedance, the, the current going into the negative terminal and the current going into the positive terminal, that's equal to zero. So those, uh, so those two currents are equal to zero. So I equals zero in this case. Uh, okay, so because of the uh, ideal op amp conditions. Because of ideal op-amp conditions, we also know that the voltage at the plus side or the inverting side, so V plus, should be equal to the voltage at the minus side uh, of the op-amp. Now, because of the way we chose our reference node, we see the V plus is equal to zero volts, so V minus should also be equal to zero volts in this case. So V minus is now zero volts, uh, so this particular node right here is zero volts uh, because of that ideal op amp property. So now let's take a look at that particular node and apply Kirkup's current law to that node. But before we can do that, we need to pick the direction of current. Let's arbitrarily draw the direction of current as I1. I'll call that I1. And then here's another direction for current I2, right? The current uh, that comes out of the node right there. So according to Kirchhoff's current law, at that this particular node right here, let me call that node A, at A by KCL, if I apply Kirchhoff's current law, know that the sum of the currents is coming in. So what are the sum of the currents going into the node A? That's I1. And the sum of the currents going out of node uh, is I2. And this current called I2. Zero. Now remember, this I0 is equal to zero because of the ideal op-amp. So that's zero because of the ideal op-amp rule. So therefore, I1 is simply equal to I2. Now let's apply uh, to this particular circuit. Let's apply Ohm's law. Ohm's law says the voltage across a resistor is equal to the current going through it times the resistance value. In this case, we know the current I1. We know the resistance R in. So uh, I1 can be written as the voltage drop across this particular resistor. On the plus side of that resistor where the voltage drop is occurring, you see that it's connected to V in of that voltage source. So that's voltage at that node, this node is V in, and voltage at that node is zero. So the voltage drop across R in is V in minus zero. And we have R in as the resistance. So that's I1. Now I2 is because of the direction of the current, we have to look at this node first. Voltage at that node is zero and I2 ends up at that node. That node is also V out. So zero minus V out is the voltage drop across the resistor RF. So we have V in minus zero divided by R in equals zero minus V out uh, divided by RF. Now rearranging the terms, we basically get V in minus R in equals minus V out over RF. That is, based on that, we get minus V out equals RF over R in times V in. Therefore, V out equals minus RF over R in times V in. Okay. This 
particular expression for the voltage output in terms of the resistors RF, RN, and VN. If you look at this carefully, we see that V out is some constant times the voltage value VN. Now, this is the gain. Okay, this is the gain. RF is typically always greater than or equal to RN, so the gain is either one or much higher. Okay, so we can control how much gain we want on the output side of this op amp by modifying the ratio of RF and RN. Now, that gain multiplies the input voltage. So let's say we had RF equals 10 kilo ohms and RN equals one, one kilo ohms. So RF is 10 times larger than RN. So RF over RN equals 10. So we have a gain of 10. Now if the voltage input was one volt and we have a gain of 10, my output voltage would be 10 times higher. So we would be getting 10 volts. Now the negative sign means that the output voltage would actually not be positive 10, but actually negative 10 volts. So in other words, the polarity of the output voltage is actually reversed in this particular case because of this. So this is, means inverted polarity. Okay. So this particular op-amp configuration is useful in not only amplifying the voltage, but also reversing the voltage polarity. So this kind of op-amp configuration is called the inverting amplifier.